Okay, here we go, another night in the garage. What are we doing today on the QX56? Um, so this 5.6 liter engine, it had some issue with the early models, the 2011, 2012s. I don't know if it's fully rectified, but inside your high pressure uh, fuel pump, there's a bucket that causes the fuel pump to pump, and that bucket contacts a lobe on the camshaft, and um, that bucket's kind of like a wear item. It's kind of like a bearing I don't know how long it lasts, but the original ones were having problems where the cam lobe would wear all the way through it and destroy the pump and get metal all throughout the fuel system. So this one was replaced as part of the timing chain recall service. So if you haven't had that done on your QX, um, definitely get that done. But that was 60,000 miles ago. So I'm gonna open it up and inspect the bucket inside here and see what it's looking like after 60,000 miles. And the first step is to take the cover off of your fuse box and then once you take the main cover off, this side fuse box is tucked down inside there. There's just two clips on the side there that you push and you can lift that out. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this fuse right here, this, this 15 amp fuse, that's for the fuel pump. So that's gonna be the first step. Okay, then after you have pulled um, that fuse, come back and remove the cover from this relay box. And as you can see, there is a fuel pump uh, 15 amp relay over here. It's that uh, blue one in the line below in between the two tents. So go ahead and pull that as well Okay, there we go So it started that first time and I turned it off and I tried starting again and it choked for a long time and um, Then it died. So let me try starting it again And nothing so I think we're good Okay, next step, uh, disconnect your negative battery terminal, and then I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to crack open this fuel line right here. And you know, what we're doing by cranking the engine with the fuel pump uh, fuses removed is we're hoping that that line, that we've exhausted all of the fuel in there because that fuel pump is at like something crazy, like 500 PSI or something it operates at. So when I crank um, that, fitting open, you know, I don't want fuel spraying out all over the place. So I stuffed a t-shirt um, in there and we're gonna crack that open and see what happens. So safety goggles on, standing kind of far back. Um, see what happens. That um, line came out without any drama. There was no fuel that sprayed out, a little bit of a fuel smell, but we got all the pressure out of the line, so I feel good now about moving on to the two nuts on either side of the top of the fuel pump, pulling out those two nuts. Okay, those two 12 millimeter nuts have now been removed, so I believe the fuel pump is now uh, free and it can be lifted out of there um, as soon as I, there's a wiring harness right here. So I just gotta disconnect this wiring harness coming in right here, and then I think we'll be good to go. Okay, so I was hoping to be able to get around this, but it's not gonna happen. So as I try to lift the fuel pump out, you can see that this right here hits this metal line. I was hoping that this could move out of the way, it's kind of push back or something, but it's not. It's a hard bended line. So here's the lifter bucket and man, it looks perfect. Looks like there's no wear on here. So I kind of have to conclude that, you know, these were getting eaten up by the cam lobe in early years, 2011, 2012. This is a 2013 and they did the timing belt uh, recall. And they replaced this part, I think, and they must have made it out of something stronger because there is like no wear on this at all. So we're good. Um, I did all this work for nothing. There was nothing wrong with the bucket. So, you know, I got peace of mind now, but this is after 60,000 miles. So, good to go. Time to put it back together. Okay, even though I don't think there's anything wrong with that bucket, I'm still gonna go ahead and put in the new one just because I have it. Um, and there's the part number, and then also gonna put in a new O-ring around the high pressure fuel pump. Um, that's something you should definitely do anytime you open it. This one, take it or leave it. I'll feel better with a new one in there. 
Since we had to open that big fuel line, we have a new gasket for that. Quick note on torque specs. This uh, fuel line right here, the gasket, this nut, I took to 25 foot-pounds. Um, this one, I didn't even get a torque spec on it. I just went until it was tight, because it's a, with a crescent wrench is how I did it. And then the nuts, 16 foot-pounds, which is the same as 192 inch-pounds. Now that everything's buttoned up with the fuel pump, gonna put the intake manifold back on. I went ahead and cleaned these mating surfaces here with just a um, paper towel and some alcohol. And I would replace the gaskets if, you know, they've been in there for any amount of time. Mine have only been in there for like a thousand miles because I just did my uh, intake valve cleaning not too long ago. But if you have the original gaskets, I would definitely recommend replacing them at this time. So just going to lay that intake manifold back on and um, basically just reconnect all the tubing and the the air box and the throttle body get everything back in order and then we're back in business that is the um high pressure fuel pump inspection and of course don't forget to put all your fuses back in and then we'll see what cranking looks like and hopefully she comes back to life so i know this isn't an intake manifold removal and installation video um, because I have that linked and there's it's kind of been covered in other videos but here's some tricks because there's only really three tricky things with the intake manifold maybe four but one of them is you know there's some bolts that need to be dropped into some kind of tight uh, spots what you can just do is get yourself a magnet a telescoping magnet and then that way you can drop those bolts right down to where they need to go without you know risking dropping them down into the V of the engine. Um, so that's one trick. Another one is the back bolt on the passenger side is by far the hardest one to get to. It's back underneath all of those lines. So what I do is I disconnect that wiring harness, that loom in as many places as possible. There's like a um, bracket that goes right here and then there's a bracket that goes right here. And there's a bracket that connects, sorry about the light. Um, there's a bracket that also connects right here. Then there's two clips that hold on the heater hoses here and here, just plastic clips. So I remove all that stuff with the hopes of having as much flexibility in this harness as possible. You see that? So you get some movement in that harness. So on one, with one hand or with an assistant, you're gonna have to push all that stuff back then, this is what I worked out, a little extension, a little tiny extension, and then a little bit longer extension with a deep wall socket, and then that'll fit right back down through there, and just barely give me enough room for the socket wrench to turn right here with this extension. Um, and that's how I get that bolt out in the back. On the other side, on the driver's side, that back bolt isn't as hard. You can see it right there, poking up right there. That one's not too bad to get to. I use a um, just a wobble socket. That way you can angle and get to that one. So that is that. Um, final word on the intake manifold is the order that you tighten the 10 bolts is specific in the factory service manual. When you torque them down, you go in a certain order.